This morning, we have Dr. Erica joining us from St. Vincent Healthcare by FaceTime. Good morning, Dr. Erica. Good morning. Thanks for uh, being here with us in, in air quotes. Um, I wanted to talk to you, of course, coronavirus is front and center right now. So what concerns or questions are your patients bringing to you? Yeah, people have a lot of questions. One of the first ones right now, which we are demonstrating, is how serious we need to be about this social distancing and social isolation and whether or not it's just a big hype. But I would encourage everybody to take it very seriously. Um, I, you know, kids out of school, um, you know, is a good thing right now. Working at home, from home if possible, not going to the normal businesses if you don't absolutely have to, limiting your trips outside of the home. Um, you know, strict attention to the hand washing and cleaning every day, the surfaces to try to get rid of this virus. And what this is doing um, is decreasing the load of this virus in our community and the burden to our community and to our hospitals and to our healthcare providers so that we can adequately take care of everybody because, you know, we're a little bit behind the rest of the country and the world in this, but there is going to be a big influx of patients into the hospitals. And what we don't want to do is overwhelm the resources available um, that, you know, every hospital has um, to take care of these patients. Healthcare workers are going to be getting sick as well. So the more we can subdue the influx of these patients and we can do that through social isolation and social distancing so that we can take care of everyone adequately as well as all of the non-COVID-19 medical emergencies that are going to continue to present to the hospitals. And with that, what if a patient is concerned, what if I have COVID-19 or, or they think they have it? Right. It's a scary time. If you think you may have COVID-19, number one, if you are critically ill, meaning you can't get a breath, you don't think you're getting enough oxygen or you're rapidly deteriorating and you think you need hospital care for that, then you certainly call 911 or report to your closest emergency department and let them know you're coming and that you have a cough and you have these symptoms you're concerned about. If you have a mask, you need to wear a mask anytime you're outside of the home or around other people. Now, if you don't think you need to be admitted to the hospital for oxygen care and critical care, then we recommend people to stay home and isolate in your home and call your primary care physician or provider and get further instruction from them. And they'll ask a series of questions that'll help categorize your risk factors and whether or not you meet criteria to come in to have COVID-19 and influenza testing at the same time. And you may have COVID-19 infection, but maybe not meet the criteria to be tested for it. And that's why we will isolate people and tell them to try to ride it out at home um, and you know decrease the risk of transmitting it to other people as best as possible. Um, certainly if you're rapidly deteriorating and monitoring the course of that, you may, you know, that may change through the course, but staying at home if you're not critically ill is the first step and calling your doctor. And this has no doubt changed the way that the clinics and hospitals are doing things around here. So what are they doing um, in response to COVID-19? You know, it's been really interesting. We've been very creative. I have been doing as well as a lot of my colleagues over at St. Vincent is doing a lot more video visits. I did about five or six video visits yesterday where if people are signed up through our electronic MyChart system, they can also set themselves up to do video visits where I can look at them face to face. It's hard because you can't do a full examination of them, but you can also kind of get the point, see how sick they look. Also for just non respiratory infection, you know, high blood pressure, depression, anxiety, all of the other things that we see people for. It's nice that we can keep them at home, look at them on the screen, refill their medications, see if they need to come in for something. Now, we're also seeing people in person who really need to be seen and be examined. We're working on telephone, getting telephone visits covered through insurance and everything as well, and maybe using that for people that don't have video visit capacity or don't have the um, computer savvy to do that. Um, we're certainly still open for that, but call if you have a question and talk to your doctor, talk to the nurse um, and find out you know, what the best plan of action is for you to keep yourself safe and everybody else safe. All right, and my last question for you, Dr. Erica, for anyone out there who has to stay home for the week or two, um, what can they do from not only keep um, going stir crazy, but um, to keep themselves healthy? Yeah, I mean, number one is this social distancing and just limiting, like I said earlier, a lot of hand washing, you know, Lysoling or bleaching surfaces that are used on a daily basis because this virus can live on surfaces for an extended period of time. Um, also, just I, you know, recommend being creative and getting as healthy of a diet as possible, keeping up with your exercise program at home as much as possible or outdoors when the weather is good. And, you know, 
eating a healthy diet, exercising, eliminating stress or limiting your stress, because all of that plays into your immune system, getting enough sleep, doing all those for self-care so that we can keep this at bay. Mm -hmm. I think that self-care is um, more important now than, than ever before. And, and, you know, staying at home isn't just an excuse Absolutely. to maybe lay around and Netflix all day, right? <laughs> all right. Well, Dr. Erica, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we look forward to the next time we get to chat.